Turning now to our next segment, Pope Francis approves a miracle advancing the canonization cause for Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Forward, and the miracle behind it is a pro-life one. On September 16, 2010, baby James Fulton Ingstrom of Washington, Illinois, was born without a heartbeat and did not have a pulse for 61 minutes. His parents immediately sought the intercession of Fulton Sheen, and baby James came back to life. Pope Francis officially approved this miracle just days ago, meaning Archbishop Sheen will be beatified a saint at a yet-to-be-announced date. Sheen was a beloved television catechist during the 1950s and 1960s in the United States. His Emmy Award-winning television show, Life is Worth Living, reached an audience of millions. And joining us now is the mother of that miracle baby, Bonnie Ingstrom. She speaks to us from Washington, Illinois, just outside of Peoria, Fulton Sheen's hometown. Bonnie, first off, how did you first hear Pope Francis approved your son's miracle, thus advancing Archbishop Fulton Sheen's canonization cause forward? Um, I was I was tagged by a friend on a online article, which is hilarious. But I was asleep when the news came, and so I, you know, a friend woke me up. It made my phone vibrate, and then, yeah. It just rolled from there. It was great. <laughs> That's 2019 for you. Bonnie, I yes. want to talk about the miracle and your miracle baby son, James Fulton. I understand it all began at your home in 2010 when you opted for an at-home birth for your son. Things were going smoothly. And then what happened, Bonnie? So, like you said, everything was great but we did not know that there was a tightly tied true knot in James's umbilical cord. And so when he was delivered, he was, I mean, basically he was a stillborn. Mm -hmm. He was blue, he did not move, he was not breathing, and we could not find a pulse anywhere. Um, so our midwife immediately began CPR and my husband did an emergency baptism and you know, we called 911. And then what happened from there? What did the paramedics say? Well, I mean, everyone was really scared. We had a friend who was present and she was a nurse on the pediatric intensive care floor. And she later told me that she had never seen a baby look like James, except for when she carried one to the morgue. And so and everyone was afraid. Mm -hmm. Everyone just... They were hoping and praying for the best, but I think they were expecting the worst. And then you and your husband felt called to ask for Fulton Sheen's intercession. Um, what happened from there? Tell us how Fulton Sheen came into play for your son's birth. Sure, yes. Yeah. So we knew that we were going to name our son after Fulton Sheen. And for days and months, we had been already calling on him for his intercession in the life of our unborn child. And so I really think that just in this moment where we were going into shock, there was nothing that we could really formulate in our minds. We just, you know, we didn't know what to do. And I think it was just relying on that habit of calling on Fulton Sheen to pray for us. And so that's what we did in that moment. Um, and, you know, as the ambulance took James to the emergency room, as the doctors tried to revive him in the emergency room, you know, we just, we just hoped and prayed for the best and trusted in God. And 61 minutes passed. Tell us about the miracle that then occurred. Yes. So um, everything that the doctors tried to restart James's heart, it, heart, it did not work. And so they finally took all hands off so that they could call time of death. And in that moment, when every window of opportunity had closed, his heart started to beat. It shot right up to 148 beats per minute, which is a healthy heart rate for a newborn baby, and it never stopped again. Then, of course, mm -hmm. the doctors, they expected massive organ failure. They expected for James to die again because you can't go 61 minutes without a heartbeat and be okay. But he didn't, and he just got better and better and hit his milestones as a baby. It's amazing. And now he's an eight-year-old boy. And how Normal. is he doing today? He's great. He just made his first communion this past spring. Um, you know, he's just, he's a, an eight-year-old boy. He can be wonderful. He can be a stinker. 
Um, he loves Star Wars. He loves fishing, chicken nuggets. I mean, it's great. Thank you for sharing that miracle with us, Bonnie. I imagine that was probably the most difficult day. Uh, and something that strikes me is that Archbishop Sheen is known for his evangelization and preaching on television. So what did prompt you to ask for his intercession for your newborn son in that moment? You know, like I said, we had already encountered Fulton Sheen. We actually were watching YouTube videos of him while I was pregnant and we were so taken by him that, and we knew his cause was open in our home diocese, the Diocese of Peoria. Mm -hmm. And so we just thought, oh, it'll be so cool if our boy is named after this future saint. Um, and that was really the beginning of us, you know, calling on him for his intercession and, and building that habit of kind of bringing him into our life and into our daily prayers. So it was, I really think it was the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who was just leading us down that path and kind of setting the table for everything that was to come. Absolutely. Bonnie, the canonization cause for a few recently named saints, St. Pope Paul VI, soon to be St. John Henry Newman, and now Fulton Sheen, all involved a miracle with a baby. What do you take away from that? You know, babies are gifts. They are only mm -hmm. gifts. They are always gifts. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so beautiful that um, the Lord is using his saints to work these miracles that just remind us over and over again that even the littlest ones matter. They are precious, mm. they're valuable, and that he can speak um, passionately and loudly and that we can promote his glory through the smallest, the smallest ones, you know? They can be the biggest miracles. It's beautiful. And as a mother of eight, you are truly a witness to that. Uh, I understand, Bonnie, that experts and theologians had to approve James's miracle. What did that process entail? Well, all I know is um, we did an investigation. There was a tribunal that the Diocese of Peoria and the Sheen Foundation did here in Peoria, Illinois. And so they you know, interviewed witnesses, they looked at all the medical records, and then they shipped all of that documentation over to Rome. And that information was then presented to the medical experts and the theologians who advised the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. And they you know, poured over every detail. The medical experts actually, they asked us for an update. Several years had gone by, so we had to take James back to the doctor and get some more um, just reports on his health and to prove that, yeah, he really is doing well, um, defying everything that, um, you know, medicine and science would tell us should have happened to him. So yeah, once they reviewed all of that, they uh, unanimously approved it as a medical miracle through the intercession of Fulton Sheen. Praise God. And Amen. Fi finally, Bonnie, what is this like for you and your family knowing that your son's birth will forever be weaved in with the story of a saint? It makes me speechless. <laughs> um, it's amazing. It feels so exciting. And at the same time, I think we just feel really small mm. and in the best way. You know, this miracle is not about us. This miracle is about God. Mm. It, you know, Jesus Christ is the one who conquered death. He's the one who brought James back to life. And all of this is for God's glory. We're just able to kind of tell the story. Well, your witness and your miracle is a reminder that the saints are there to intercede for families welcoming in new life. Bonnie Ingstrom, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a joy.